Yo, 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 welcome back again today, guys. And today we'll be talking about another black man in African history, right? African history around the world. That's what we talk about. That's what this network's about. So we're talking about another black man in African history today. So, yo, let's get right into it, all right? So today we'll be talking about Olaudo Equiano. And Olaudo Equiano was a former enslaved African merchant who wrote an autobiography telling the horror of slavery and was also a seaman. He also lobbied a parliament for abolition of slavery as well. Equiano was born in the kingdom of Benin, and which is now modern day Nigeria in West Africa, in case you did not know, and was a member of the Ibu nation. He was kidnapped and sold into slavery as a child. Equiano endured the middle passes of the slave ship heading for what the Europeans classified as the new world. The Europeans uh, we're still trying to find the, what they classified as the new world, so that's where he headed to. Equiano spent a short period of time in the Caribbean on the island of Barbados. He then was shipped to Virginia in the United States and was put to work gathering stones and weeding grass. In 1757, Equiano was brought by the Captain Pascal, who was a naval captain. Captain Pascal bought Equiano for about 40 British pounds or about $52 as of today's currency. After buying Equiano, Captain Pascal named him Gustava Vasa. Equiano was around 12 when he first arrived in England. For part of the time, he stayed at Blackheath in London with relatives of Pascal or Captain Pascal's. And here, he this is where he learned um, how to write, read, and do ar arithmetic in English. Although Equiano spent most of his time at sea on trading vessels and warships, he served Captain Pascal during naval campaigns in Canada and then after in the Mediterranean. In 1763, Captain Pascal sold Equiano to Captain James Duran. And the captain then took him to the Caribbean island of Maserat and sold him to the island's leader, uh, merchant, Robert King. The next three years would be very important, very, very important for Equiano. And this was due to his picked up skills of trading and saving any money he collected, any money he collected. In which this led to him saving enough money to buy his freedom for 40 pounds. Equiano soon returned to London and he worked as a seaman, steward, and once as an acting captain. He traveled a wide range of places such as the Atlantic, Mediterranean, and the Arctic, in which he was trying to reach the North Pole. After his travels and adventures, he returned back to London and came into contact with Granville Sharp, in which was an anti-slaver campaigner. And at the time, or at the same time actually, Equiano's friend, John Ennis, was kidnapped by his former slave owners. Granville and Equiano tried their very hardest to save him, Equiano's friend, but were unsuccessful. Equiano in 1775 traveled to the Caribbean and became involved in setting up a new plantation colony on the coast of Central America. Equiano did everything in his power, everything in his power to comfort and make the conditions easier for enslaved peoples brought to work on the plantation. Equiano also was badly mistreated, badly mistreated, and a slave trader in the area tried to enslave him once more by stringing him up with ropes uh, for several hours. And Equiano managed to escape in a canoe, however, at that moment. After his escape, Equiano returned to London and worked as a servant for some time before finding work employment with the Sierra Leone Resettlement Project. Sierra Leone Resettlement Project was set up to be a safe place for freed slaves to live and to work. Equiano also formed the Sons of Africa, which was a group who campaigned for abolition in the form of public speaking, letter writing, and lobbying parliament. In 1788, Equiano led a delegation to the House of Commons to support William Dobin's bill to improve conditions on slave ships by limiting the number of enslaved Africans that ships could carry. He knew that the most powerful arguments to combat slavery was his very own life story. 
1789, he published his autobiography, The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Oladu Equiano. The book became a bestseller and was translated into many languages. Equiano's book began with a petition addressing or addressed to the parliament and ended with his anti-slavery letter to the queen. Tens of thousands of people who read Equiano's book or heard him speak started to see slavery through the eyes of the former enslaved Africans. This was a very, very important book and this book made a very important vital case to the abolitionist case or cause. He promoted very hard to promote his book and he went on tours to lecture around Ireland and Britain. Equiano spent most of the 1790s campaigning against slavery. He was also helped by abolitionists such as Thomas Clarkson. Now I will read what was written by Equiano in 1792. Sir, I went to Ireland and was there eight and a half months and sold 1900 copies of my narrative. I came here on the 10th and I now mean to leave London in about eight or 10 days and to take my wife of Soham into Cambridgeshire. When I have given her about eight to 10 days of comfort, I mean directly to go to Scotland and sell my fifth editions. I trust that my going has been of much use to the cause of abolition of the accursed slave trade. A gentleman of the committee, the Rev. Dr. Dr. Baker, has said that I am more used to the cause than half the people in the country. I wish to God I could be so. In 1792, Equiano married Susan Cullen. After his marriage, Equiano visited Scotland, Durham, and Hull. In 1793, his travels took him to Bath and Devizes. These travels turned the public against the slave trade, raising awareness of horrors of the slave trade. This challenged attitudes towards enslaved people and inspired others to join the abolition campaign. Equiano died in March 1793, though the slave trade in Britain did not end up until a nearly a decade later, and it would take also an additional 40 years before slavery itself was abolished in the British colonies. So today we learn about another black man, African man, a person of African descent that did very, very important things. Uh, this book was documented. It's a real book. You should go read it. These things have been documented, so these people have left these things in our past so we can learn from them, so we can move on to the future. And a part of history that we really need to know, as always, all the history that we should know, right? So until next time, yo, we learned about another man, good, great man today that did very important things. Until next time, yo, I'm out. Peace, one love. What's up, what's up? Hey. Shalom. What up? Hi. Every day. Bye.